Hi friends, it's Marie at Living Felt. In this tutorial, we're going to show you how you can create your own beautiful and one-of-a-kind handmade felt backgrounds to needle felt onto. We will show you how you can wet felt an art bat that you created on your drum carter or by hand, or how you can achieve a very similar look and interest by hand blending the fibers yourself. Together, we will look at how we set up our wet felting station and how we build the base of our picture. We'll explore the fibers that we use to create this background and show you how you can hand blend them together to get beautiful and interesting colors and textures that will become a new little world where you can needle felt your very own scene on. Sometimes the background you want for your needle felted picture is more complex and has a lot of lovely transitions in fibers. A very easy way to achieve this is to go ahead and hand card or blend your fibers together and wet felt them to create a new canvas. That's what we're going to do together today. This beautiful bat is our Fairy Fantasies bat, and we carded this together in our recent drum carding video. If you don't have a drum carder, it might seem that this is out of reach, but in this video, we'll show you how to hand blend fibers and achieve something very similar so that you can wet felt your own background like ours. In our next video, we'll show you how you can use this wet felted piece to serve as a background in a fun needle felted picture. For this project, we'll be starting with a pre-felt base. I'll be working with our PFM, but the PFL will work well also. Your choice whether you go single thickness or double thickness on that. The color fibers are merino tops, merino silk blends, and you can also use our luster blends. The luster fibers are viscose, they can be Tessa silk, we're also using bamboo, some naps, and angelina fiber. So here's a collection of the fibers we'll be using, just like the ones we created in this bat. So if you have a carded art bat, you can use that instead. To create this piece, in addition to the pre-felt, we used approximately one ounce of fiber to include the merino tops and the luster fibers. For felting this project, the tools are very simple. This is my minimal setup for wet felting what I call a single station or a small project. Of course, we have our bowl of water, which is room temperature, watering device, which can be a ball brass and or a kitchen sponge, our favorite olive oil soap, which we import, and I like a little dish to hold on to that. You'll want a towel or two to keep your hands and everything else dry. I like a rolling device, and today we're gonna to use a hard closet pole. We use our nano bubble, some mesh to wet through, and plastic sheeting. I suggest two layers. All of these things should be larger than your project. We're using pre-felt as a single layer in our project. It's a fairly neutral layer because the fibers are mixed up going in several directions, but it gives us a shape to shoot towards and a nice base layer on which to start. We are working with a 12 by 12 cut of our PFM pre-felt. You could also use the PFL and you could use two layers if you like. You are also welcome to change the dimensions. Our final project, the design layer, runs mostly east and west or horizontal. All of those fibers are going to be running in this direction and they will pull the project in and want to shrink it this way. To help balance that, we are going to run fibers north and south in a middle layer and that will help control our project to being square. This layer can be a neutral color, it could be white, or it could be any color or two from your project, or three even. Our skies are pink and purple, we'll use pink. Our grass is green, we'll use green. To create our horizontal layer, we start first by dividing each fiber color in half lengthwise. This will really allow you to control the fiber as you pull it off. Notice that each time you pull the fiber off, you want it to be flat and even, or the same size and shape as the last piece you laid down. We butt the blunt edges up to the top of the perimeter, and we do a slight overlap with each fiber tuft that we lay down. This is called shingling. The next row slightly overlaps the bottom of the previous row. You can go approximately 25%. 
Notice that we overlap each row even when we change the colors. Just continue, always overlap the next row on top of the one prior. We're just pulling off nice thin layers of a single thickness. This is a great project to practice doing a nice even layout. Repeat this all the way through the project, going back to add fiber anywhere where it seems thin. Fixing bare spots or worrying about holes really should be dealt with in the layout process, and then you don't have to deal with them after you're done. Just a quick note on the color selection for this layer. You could use a neutral color or you could use the same color in your pictures. Remember that fibers migrate both directions up and down as well as you know, left and right and north and south. So because there might be some bleed through or what we call halo, it's a good idea to have these colors match the scene that's going on top of it or be neutral. For a reference, our pre-felt base layer weighed four tenths of an ounce and our vertical layer also weighed four tenths of an ounce. Now that your base layer is ready, it's time for our design layer. If you're working with a carded bat like mine, you can just center your carded bat right on top of the base layers. And then we will cut it into a square. The reason I do this is because if you tear this bat, it will get thin on the edges where you do that. Where there's less fiber, it will shrink more and it's more likely to want to bow in instead of remain square. So it might be a challenge for some people, but once you get this in place, then you can cut it square and you can even cut it slightly larger than the pre-felt and base layer beneath. And if you're going to hand blend your design layer, that's what we'll do next. To begin building our horizontal layer, we're going to work with these six colors and then we'll add a final design layer on top. We've divided these to be approximately the width of our layout and then we're going to divide them lengthwise. So we'll only use about half of each of these lengths of fiber. These fibers plus our base layer together weigh approximately 1.4. So we'll use as much of this as we can and then just a tenth or two will form our final design layer. We'll start with the darkest color at the bottom. Again, I'll divide the thickness so I can save a little back for blending. This entire layer is going to run east to west. Don't worry if with some colors you find that you want to go back and get a little more because then certainly on another color you'll end up using a little less. To form this bridge, we're going to blend these two together. It's okay to do little bits at a time. We'll just pull and blend and stack and they don't need to be taken very far at all. A nice non-homogeneous blend will be fantastic. Then we move on to our next color. Always do a slight overlap from the layer underneath. This is a really important layer. It should be as even as possible. So take a moment and pat around and feel and make sure that everything feels fairly uniform, especially as we go through these color transitions. It can be easy to have kind of a thin spot. Now is the perfect time to fill it in before we move on to the final design layer. 
To bring some life and sheen to the grass, I'll be working with this merino silk blend that we call Honeydew. It's striated already and has silks running through it, so it has some really nice sheen. You can either blend this with the merino top or you can just stretch it out across the grass that you have already going. In addition for this, you could use Tessa silk, viscose, or even bamboo to add interest to the grass. So on that note, we'll bring in a little yellow and limey green bamboo. I'm also gonna bring in just a touch of coral to add some interest. In this fiber, you can also select out the exact fiber that you want from the blend. Some people report problems with neps. I always know that at least a couple of them are gonna fall off and I don't worry about every single one, but the these long wool fibers will anchor them down. For my sky transition here, I'd really like to put in some purple. So we're going to bring in a purplish merino top and merino silk blends and get some interest going on in here. Most of the topical fibers that we add, the luster fibers or the texture fibers, don't actually felt themselves. So combining them with a little bit of other types of fiber really helps them anchor into the project. Angelina, if you clump it too much, it will just sit right on top and look hairy. So blend it with a little bit of other fiber to intermingle it and mute it and a little sheen will go a long way in the final piece. I really like to add Angelina in the grass and the skies because this is going to be a fairy fantasy little piece. Now it's time to wet felt our piece. We're very happy with the design of our little background and we're going to turn it into handmade felt. Bring in your room temperature water and cover your work with your mesh. Use your ball brass and or your sponge to distribute water and soap evenly throughout the entire project. I like to wet out from the middle and disperse the water and the soap evenly. If you jump all around the project, it will get bubbles and wrinkles in it. So smooth it out just like you would shelf paper or wallpaper. The most important thing is that all of the fibers are wet, but we don't want them sitting in a puddle of water. So if water is running off, go ahead and take it up with your sponge. Work your way around the entire project and flatten it, pressing water and soap in and air out. With your mesh still in place, begin gently hand rubbing. This is a very delicate process and we'll spend just about five minutes lightly rubbing across the entire side A or design layer of our project, being even in all areas. So go side to side, up and down, and create small circles. If you're not sure if you're using too much pressure, you can always check by just peeling your mesh back. Nothing should be sticking to it, but if you have sticky things like hankies, they might stick all the time. So peel it back and check often. Right now these fibers are wet and this guy looks a little more streaky than maybe I initially intended, but I kind of like it and it looks like a very active sky. If there's anything you don't like about how your project looks right now, then dry your hands and add any buffer layers or any accents that you want to add before you go too far. For this project, don't worry too much about the fibers trailing over on each edge, whether it's top, bottom, or the sides. They'll get tamed as we roll. After you've massaged side A completely, remove your mesh, replace it with plastic, flip your project over, and repeat those steps on side B.
as always happens when you add water to a pile of something dry, it spreads out and goes further than it did before. So this is stretching beyond our pre-felt layer, which is fine because it means our pre-felt won't show through the back. You could wrap these around if you want, but again, I'm going to keep this organic so that we'll have as much of the canvas to work with and or mat in the final project. If you had put a carded bat on top of the pre-felt and then cut it, these trailing fibers would be a lot closer unless you left a little bit of perimeter. So just use your judgment when you're at that stage. We want to control the shrinkage of our project and keep it as square as possible. To achieve that, we've been very careful in our design layers and tried to use an even amount of fiber going in each direction. How we roll and how we agitate the project or how we felt it is also going to impact that. So be even in everything you do, treating both side A and B the same and all four edges. After hand rubbing both sides for five minutes, we're going to roll it up in our dowel some people really don't like to roll. It's not that hard and you might try this little rock and roll method, but if that's not really comfortable for you, then you can continue rubbing with your hands or you could use a tool like the palm washboard and continue massaging both sides of the fabric throughout the same progression of felting the piece. Place your dowel on top of your project and roll it up. Then roll the entire package in your towel. We're going to do rock and rolls of this project, rolling from each edge of side A 100 times. We rock and roll for 25 cycles, and then we turn on its axis a quarter turn so a different part of the bundle is now sitting on the table. Roll another 25 and continue until you've reached 100. Give your project a clockwise turn so that you roll from all four edges of side B. Once you've rolled from all four edges on side A, flip your project over and do the same on side B. You'll notice that as we roll, my hands tend to go from the middle to the edge or towards the edges of the pole. That's because I'm trying to cover the width of the project with each round of rolls. I like to do the first 100 rolls for side A and side B completely sandwiched in plastic, and then I feel like everything is really being held or mashed together. After those 100 rolls on each side, it's a great time to evaluate the progress of your felt. Get in there and see how are the naps hanging on, and boy, all of mine are really laying down. The Angelina, some of it's sitting on top, but most of it is being uh, grabbed onto by fibers below, and as we continue to felt, more fibers will migrate up through them. The project is still very fragile, but it's starting to come together. You can do this test between your fingers, and we can feel that there's still a little bit of a separation in the layers, and we can see it as well. That's absolutely normal. 100 rolls will not a handmade felt fabric make. <laughs> so keep on rolling and continue the same process we just did, but I like to put one piece of plastic on top now, and that way I feel like there's a nice protection between the fibers and my wood pole. Otherwise, the fibers wanna grab onto the wood pole, but I also feel like there's some freedom for the fabric that we're starting to create to allow those fibers to get closer and closer together and start the shrinking process. So keep rolling. I like to roll in these short increments of 100 per edge on side A and side B because I feel like it gives me the opportunity to constantly evaluate my felt. Sometimes people ask me, aren't I concerned about the wrinkles that happen? 
Wrinkles can happen when there's not enough water in the project and the layer's too thick, so they start to buckle in on themselves. It can happen if you roll your initial rolls too tightly, or maybe your center dowel is too narrow for the thickness of the project, but it can also happen if the fibers start to shrink and adhere to each other. So try these short bursts and constantly evaluate your felt at each turn. Now that we have done another 100 rolls from all four edges on side A and side B, it's a great time to evaluate our felt. You can see it's not uh, very wet if I hold it up. There's no water dripping onto the tabletop, but I feel that I could squeeze water out of it. That's one thing I notice is that it's got a good amount of water in it, but it's not dripping. You can see that it's holding up as one fabric and it's really starting to get integrity now and hold together. So we have reached the initial stages of felt or the pre-felt stage, and now it's time for fulling. Fulling is where we continue our agitation in whatever means you're using to make your felt fabric and allow the fibers to shrink or get closer and closer together. In these methods, you will start to feel the fiber getting more dense in your hands. If you feel that there's a lot of water in the project and it looks like it's about the same place as mine is, you can squeeze just a little bit of the water out, but don't make it dry. We want a little bit of water left in there. So I'm just squeezing out a little bit of excess and that's going to remove the space that the water takes up and allow the fibers to get move into those space where the water had been. So whatever you do here in the fulling stage, let it be to help control the shape and the shrinkage of your project. We're going to roll and rub, but we're not going to do any throwing or tossing because that causes the shrinkage to be uneven. I'm going to continue felting, rolling mostly, this piece to encourage the shrinkage to stay fairly even, knowing that eventually I'm probably going to mat my piece. You can always cut it, but anywhere you feel that you want a little more shrinkage, you can do what we call spot fulling. And that means just to focus your agitation in whatever method you're using on that particular area. So you can see I did one roll and this area has already come up a little bit from where it was. Let's do that again. With just a little agitation, we're already starting to coax this to shrink where we want it. Do the same anywhere where you want to really get the fibers a little more even, but know that some of that is gonna have been dictated by just where the fibers spread out and fanned out after we wetted them. If you're relatively new to felting and you're not sure how far to take this, go ahead and do it between 10 and 20 minutes, rolling and pinching and uh, rotating the piece and evaluate how it feels after that. In addition to spot fulling, you can also tug your piece back out if there's anywhere you feel like it's not shaping like you want it to. Continue fulling and spot fulling your piece until you're happy with the shape and the density and you know that you have a really solid piece of felt. Then rinse out all of the soap. Once all of the soap is out of the project, put water in a bowl and a teaspoon or two of vinegar and then soak your project for about 15 minutes while you clean up your workstation. After soaking your project, roll it up in a towel and get all of the excess water out and then set it flat to dry overnight. For the final stage of preparing our felted canvas, we're going to give it a good steam press and just smooth out all of the texture. Because there's Angelina in here, you might like to use a barrier between your iron and the canvas. Just give it a good steam press and I think you'll really be pleased with the final look of your artwork. Our canvases have dried overnight and they look fantastic. 
This piece was made with our art bat that we carded on the drum carter, and this one we made together and hand blended the fibers. They weigh similar amounts and they're very similar in size. We don't get a lot of shrinkage in the horizontal or vertical really, and we've able to mostly able to control our shapes. A couple of differences are this bat was cut to the same size as the pre-felt before it was wet felted, and therefore you can see some of that pre-felt underneath. And this one was hand laid out and allowed to go over the back of the pre-felt so that there's a little bit more of a perimeter. Something you'll notice if you look down here in the grass, one thing is that we were pretty easily able to obtain a very nice blended background and to mimic our topical designs by adding luster fibers along with our wool. Our neps are all staying down no matter which process we used. And wherever we added extra embellishment or luster fibers in the yellow and the angelina, I love how it looks like the sun is now shining on this part of the grass. So you can be a little more intentional by using your hands and you can even add those extra bits on top of a bat that's already been made on a drum carter or hand carters. The sky is very similar in where we've placed the color, but the difference is on this one, I let the grass come up a little bit higher and I left some of the streaks in the sky so you can get an idea of what it looks like if you don't make your blends as homogenous as we did in the grass. You're going to have some very um, clearly defined lines from those strong colors that we used. And in this one, I almost can see a little mountain range back here. Sometimes you see things in the image after you've made it. Looking up here in the sky, I chose to make this one a little bit more warm, whereas this one goes very light. This has some light little streaks, and here we swirled our viscose along with our uh, the two viscose blends actually and let them just be a little more active in the sky versus very serene. So it might be fun to make a few different backgrounds and play with your methodologies and see what you want for the particular picture or project you're working on. With either one of these, you can decide how you'd like to use it in your picture, whether you're going to put it on a floating frame, mount this on like a painted or covered canvas, or map this so that you don't see the edges. Both of these pieces have been well felted and they are ready for putting your final designs on. Whether you would like to needle felt that, do some fabric applique, add some beadwork, you have made a great piece of handmade felt that can now take on a new life with some new additions. Thanks for watching y'all. I hope you've had fun with this process and I really hope that you'll endeavor to create your own because in the next segment, we'll be needle felting pictures onto our handmade felt backgrounds.